One element of Vampire the Requiem 2nd Edition, formerly known as Blood and Smoke, the Strix Chronicle, uh, one element that I really uh, enjoy or appreciate about this game is its focus on the vampiric curse almost being a character unto itself. Not that it's a conscious character out there speaking and talking, uh, but that the, the curse wants to be spread, the curse wants to infect others. And one of the major changes uh, in this game, especially from Vampire the Masquerade, uh, has been the inclusion uh, of revenants, of clanless vampires that are uh, created through the kind of random acts of violence of the kindred. Uh, no longer can vampirism solely be spread uh, through the typical embrace, uh, the, the you know, murdering someone and feeding them uh, your blood and investing a piece of what re little remains of your uh, your willpower, your humanity into that, and and changing that person there on the spot. Beyond that, there is another way that vampires can be created. Um, any vampire or any human that had ever had contact with the curse, who had been fed vampiric blood. Um, who had been the victim of uh, a conspicuous feeding attempt by a vampire, someone who was attacked and, and really wounded. Not, this, not the kind of standard seduction that the vampire um, uses to, to lure its prey and to feed off of its prey and cleanly lick the wound away. When their throat is torn open by a vampire in frenzy, someone who has, has died at the hands of the beast, essentially, there is a chance that any of those people, when they die within the next week or so, that their body will rise as a vampire. And that to me is extremely interesting because it puts another limiting factor on the amount of violence that you are able to use as a character um, and the accountability that you're gonna to have to have uh, for your actions when you kill human beings in this game. Uh, there are consequences to be had. Um, and what's interesting about the revenants is that they are clanless when they awake. And when they awake, they are starving. They have no vitae whatsoever. And this is their curse night after night. They may kill, and they may drink the blood of a human and, and, and satisfy, slake their thirst. But when they go through the day sleep, that blood sweats out of them is consumed and no longer sustains them they wake up starving once again and so this makes it very difficult to keep these these vampires under control when they rise they're they're dangerous they have no idea they were not chosen by another vampire they were not brought into kindred society uh, with the intent of introducing them to the traditions or anything along those lines they are quite literally uh, almost like mindless animals in their in their first few moments every single night when they frenzy from that starvation and it makes it difficult because uh they they aren't concerned with the masquerade and with keeping uh with with keeping tight-lipped about the existence of vampires it puts all other vampires in a very dangerous situation to have them running around and there's a number of things that can be done to deal with these cursed individuals the first and most obvious is to destroy them. Um, the second, however, is that you can bring them into kindred society, and you can bestow a clan upon them. You have basically have to complete the embrace. You have to feed them your blood and invest a point of your own humanity into that character. And by doing so, they take on the weaknesses of your clan. They become a full member of your clan, and they no longer are awakened every single night with this unquenchable bloodlust. Uh, they're not... They don't suffer from that weakness. Um, and so it makes for a lot of interesting story potential um, for the consequences of, of uh, what would seem to be kind of innocuous feeding. Um, it also makes a great starting point for a player character, someone who doesn't necessarily want to have connections when they start out, someone who doesn't even necessarily want a sire uh, to begin with, they can simply be the victim of a murder, or someone who's been fed blood for a blood bond, or, or previously having been a ghoul, 
uh, rising again. Uh, it makes for a desperate uh, opening to your game. It's very, very interesting. And I love this idea that the curse is trying to get out, that the curse is trying to infect other people. And um, that's something I think that Onyx Path really, really uh, needs to get some credit for. It made this game a lot more interesting. Um, everything about this game is more interesting than the first edition, at least in my opinion. And it's uh, it's definitely one of my still one of my favorite RPG products ever created. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the curse as a character and uh, what its implications are in the game and why you should play Vampire the Requiem Second Edition. It's a great game.